Hi everyone, today I will be talking uh, to you on pediatric resuscitation. Um, what I'm going to go through is only a brief outline of pediatric resuscitation and I would invite you to go to this website, storify.com, where I have compiled uh, more notes, uh, supplemental notes, as well as more videos that you can go through. The first question obviously that we need to ask is are pediatric patients merely small adults? Uh, do we consider them physiologically the same uh, even though their sizes are smaller? Well obviously we should not be because pediatric patients must be managed and cared for differently compared to adults because of their age, physical and mental development personalities as well as experiences. And so for pediatric patients, not only that we need to consider, uh, not only that their sizes are different, smaller, physiologically they are different, as well as because that um, a pediatric patient is undergoing a growth and development period and therefore we must uh, take this into consideration as well when they uh, go through a traumatic period. Or traumatic event. Also, there's some other con special considerations when we talk about pediatric patients. Uh, in terms of the head and neck, the head is proportionally larger and heavier, and therefore, children, pediatric patients, have a tendency to land head first. The other thing is that the fontanelles in the neonates may be still open, and therefore, they can accommodate a larger increase in intracranial uh, pressure before they manifest clinically. In terms of their airway and the respiratory system, the tongue is relatively larger compared to the oral pharynx. Uh, airway is narrower, softer, and uh, uh, smaller. The neck muscles may not be fully formed and be able to protect uh, the neck and the airways yet. And the, um, the larynx is relatively careful in position. And so this picture shows the natural flexion positions of an infant. Um, and therefore, in order to achieve a better uh, uh, airway opening, it may be necessary to put a folded towel in between the shoulder blade. The larynx is funnel shaped and uh, the tracheal is easily obstructed for the reasons that the airway is narrower in terms of the diameter and narrow in terms of the radius. Um, if you remember this formula, the resistance of the airway is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the airway radius, and therefore a relatively small amount of edema, inflammation, uh, obstruction can cause a significant airway obstruction in a, a child or a pediatric patient. Uh, upper airway obstruction will cause uh, stridal, and lower airway obstruction will cause uh, wheezing. Um, in terms of the chest and abdomen, the chest structures are more, relast, uh, more elastic and therefore a, a, um, a pediatric patient may have uh, sustained um, pulmonary contusion, internal organ injuries without obvious rib fracture. Um, the abdominal muscles are also not fully formed and therefore their, their internal organs uh, may not be well protected and uh, prone to have abdominal or intra-abdominal injury. Uh, in terms of the body surface area, um, they have a relatively large body surface area in proportion to the body total body mass and therefore they are at risk of developing hypothermia. And therefore, it's very important for us to keep the patients warm and covered. Uh, in terms of the body volume estimations, neonate has about 90 mL per kilo, and therefore, if we do an exchange transfusion to two times of the body volume, uh, infants have about 80 mL uh, 80 mL per kilo, and children is about seven, and older children is about 70 mL per kilo, approaching that of an adult. Uh, if we take uh, adults, for example, 70 kilos. 70 times 70 will be about 4,900 or about 5 
thousand mils in the body. Well, in terms of the blood pressure estimation, obviously we cannot use the formula of 120 over 70 because that is for the adults. Uh, for a child, we estimate according to the age. And so hypotension is, is defined as less than the fifth percentile for the age of the child. And so systolic blood pressure for act, uh, the fifth percentile would be the 70 plus 2 times age in years. And so therefore hypotension less than the fifth percentile would be less than 70 plus 2 times age in years. If we take, for example, a, a child of uh, 10 years old, a child of a 10 years old, uh, 10, so you would have 70 plus 2 times H, 2 times 10, 20, so be less than 90 uh, millimeter mercury for systolic blood pressure for them to, to be defined as hypotension. The median or the 50 50th percentile would be defined as the 80 uh, plus 2 times age in years. So uh, for a 10 years old kid, and this would be 100 uh, millimeter mercury. And so that would be considered as normal. In terms of the weight estimation below 8 years old, is be 2 times age plus 4, or in some cases 2 times age plus... 2 times H plus uh, 8. Uh, for 8 years and above, it will be 3 times H. And so let's say we take uh, 8 years old. 8 years old, so it will be 2 times 8. 16 plus 8, it will be about 24 kilos. If we use the other formula, uh, two times, uh, 3 times H, so it will be 3, 3 times 8. To be 24 as well and so um, it's easy to remember the cutoff is like eight years old in terms of ET tube size for a child who requires endotracheal intubation the size is 4 plus H divided by 4 uh, let's say for eight years old again will be 4 plus 8 divided by the 4 will be 4 plus 2 6 size 6 internal diameter size 6 uh, the Depth of the insertion, we can. There are two formulas. You can use either one of them. Uh, one of them is two, uh, 12 plus H divided by two. Uh, let's say a child is eight years old, will be uh, sixteen, and my uh, uh, preferred one will be three times just the size of the tube. So if we use a size six, will be the depth of insertion will be around eighteen. But there is always a marker at the ET tube that you can use as a guide. Uh, to show you whether you have adequately inserted uh, at, a, at, at a adequate depth. Okay, now this is the chain of survival of the American Heart Association uh, for resuscitation. Uh, this is for the this is for the adults, and this is for the pediatrics. So let's take a look at this and compare the two. What are the differences between these two? Well, obviously, if you look at the first chain. First chain. Now the first chain is call first. Uh, this is very important for adult cardiac arrest victims because of the fact that many of them non-traumatic sudden onset out of hospital, especially cardiac arrest for adult patients. Um, most of the time is due to myocardial infarction, sudden onset. Uh, they may be in uh, they may be in ventricular fibrillation as well. And therefore, it's very important to get help in order to. Uh, get the AED on site before you actually start doing a chest compression. And when the help arrives, when the AED arrives, then you uh, put on the AED to monitor and see whether there requires defibrillation. Uh, but in terms of uh, pediatrics, a number of causes of uh, cardiac arrest in pediatric are actually preventable causes. And therefore, prevention is very important in this case. Uh, so the emphasis here is on prevention. Before, uh, of course, uh, we do uh, one cycle of resuscitation, one cycle of 
cardiopulmonary resuscitation and in the pediatric patients may be actually very important to uh, give rescue breathing as well. Uh, hence on CPR, well, if uh, for uh, lay rescuers who are not willing to do um, any CPR, of course, uh, hands-on CPI is better than no CPI at all, but the emphasis is still on rescue breathing for uh, pediatric patients. And so give one cycle of uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation before you call the patients. And so you can see the difference here. This is call first, and this is call fast. And the emphasis on prevention. So these are the two differences of the chain of survival. Uh, by the way, the chain survival are a series of actions, a series of steps that must be taken consequentially uh, to optimize the chance of survival of a cardiac arrest victim. Again, in the infants, uh, because the leading causes of death are congenital malformations, con complications of prematurity, uh, some of these are, of course, congenital and may not be preventable. Uh, but other than that, even for sudden infant death syndromes, a number of causes, are, num a number of reasons are probably preventable as well. But in the older children, the leading cause of death or cardiac arrest is injury. And therefore, the emphasis must be given on injury prevention. Um, as mentioned, uh, many infants and children are taught to develop respiratory arrests and bradycardia before they actually develop cardiac arrest. Uh, for a child, the cardiac output is very much dependent on the heart rate. And therefore, any child with poor uh, tissue perfusion with uh, uh, no evidence of uh, adequate or no evidence of cardiac output and the, and, and, the, and, the, and the pulse rate is already less than 60 we may actually need to begin cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And if a lone rescuer finds an unresponsive child who is not breathing and only gasping, therefore, at this moment, you should be providing five cycles of two minutes of CPR. And so if we look at the, uh, uh, the um, basic life support for an adult and for a child, uh, compression and ventilation rest a ratio for a two rescuers can be 15 to, but it's only for trained healthcare providers. So for a res for a, for a rescuer who are who for rescuers who are healthcare providers, trained healthcare providers, you can still perform 15 to, not 32. Um, I mean, you can still perform 32, but an alternative and is 15 to, but only for two rescuers. And when the rescuers are uh, healthcare providers trained. For adults, uh, it's simplified. We make it into a standard one 30 compression into two uh, ventilation. Uh, for compression depth, it's about one third of the depth of the AP diameter of a chest. And so we don't use the formula of, uh, of five um, uh, if, as is in adults. Um, of course, um, um, because of the smaller size, we can actually use a one hand or a two hands technique for compression. Uh, this part is the same. Um, we will take up to 10 seconds to check for the pulse. Um, for the infant, we can actually check for the bra uh, brachial pulse as well. Um, for an uh, uh, older, ch uh, older child, uh, you can uh, check the femoral as well as the carotid. Um, if you are unsure, by 10 seconds, of course, by, uh, for the benefit of the dog, we start CPR uh, for the child. And if the pulse is less than 60 with poor tissue perfusions, uh, pale, mottled skin, sinuses, then of course you begin CPR. As I mentioned, because uh, if for pediatric patients, the cardiac output is very much dependent on the heart rate. This is uh, this slide shows the uh, two hands technique and also the one hand technique. This is a one hand technique. Um, and uh, for an infant, you can 
there are two methods one is the two finger methods and this one is the two thumb methods where the hands both hands encircling the chest wall of the child um, the guidelines can uh, say that you can use either one hand technique or two hand technique for Malaysia, but for Malaysian children because of the smallest child a uh, small size uh, it's better that we use one hand technique uh, defibrillations uh, AD can be used uh, of course you can use uh, use it together with a pediatric attenuator um, first shot is 2 joules per kilo second shot is for 4 joules so. and so the summary um, start CPR as early as possible just like it announced within 10 seconds uh, of uh, recognition do not uh, delay uh, even if the pulse is uh, around 60 you still not necessarily wait until it's assisted but when the pulse is pulse rate is already uh, less than 60 beats per minute with poor perfusion start CPR push hard push fast at least 100 uh, uh, per minute 100 beats per minute um, the depth uh, is about one third of the depth of the chest wall of course it's hard with, it, it, but in an actual resuscitation case it will be hard to uh, actually measure how deep it is unless you have a feedback device um, and allow for full chest recall Minimize interruptions, um, just like in adults. Give effective rescue breathing, rescue breath and ventilations because, especially in adults, because uh, primary insults is still because of uh, ventilation problem. But of course, just like in adults, avoid excessive ventilation, splinting of the diaphragm, uh, increase intrathoracic pressure, and therefore reduce effective cardiac output during chest compression. Um, with that, I thank you. I uh, hope I've given you a um, summary and outlines of pediatric resuscitations. And as mentioned, go to the website, go to the American Heart Association's uh, manual to look for, uh, to read more on pediatric resuscitations. Thank you.